everyone, welcome back. Today I thought we'd take a look at an octopus. Uh, the octopus or ivy curve tracer is a simple piece of test equipment that you can build for yourself. Um, I happen to buy this one, but it's a pretty simple circuit. If you, Google, if you go and you Google it, uh, you'll find lots of different designs. Some as simple as a transformer and two resistors and others more complicated with op amps and circuits for displaying voltages and all sorts of other things. But, you know, at its simplest, uh, an octopus just takes an AC voltage, passes it through a device under test, and it generates two voltages on the output that shows the relationship of the voltage going into the device and the current that the device draws. And by hooking that up to an oscilloscope in XY mode, you get to plot um, a curve that is representative or characteristic of the device that you're testing. And these curves are pretty, pretty identifiable. You know, diodes, zeners, capacitors, resistors, all have a very distinctive look. And so an octopus makes short work of sorting through random components that you might have, uh, things that you've pulled off of circuit boards and whatnot. Um, and also just as a diagnostic tool. You're trying to fix something if you want to know is a particular component good or bad. Uh, Curve Tracer can give you some, some quick insight into that. So let's take a look at the curves of some of the components I mentioned and see what they look like on the scope. So you have my octopus hooked up to my Tech 2445 and my HP 54603B oscilloscopes. And on the screen, what we're looking at is the curve generated for a silicon diode. Uh, this is pretty much the curve for any diode. If we look here, we're passing in uh, an 8 volt peak voltage, so it's 16 volts peak to peak. If we look here, we're at 2 volts per division. We can see 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 volts. The negative side is true to a diode, it doesn't conduct on any negative voltage. But just once we get past zero volts, we can see the diode turns on and it stays on. If we zoom in a bit here, okay, we're at 200 millivolts per division. We can see two, four, six, just, uh, just around 600 millivolts, 610, 620 uh, is when the diode turns on, which is right in line for a silicon diode. Um, since we have a digital scope, we can toss a couple of cursors on here and we can measure that for ourselves and we can see it's right around, yep, right around 610, the diode turns on. So let's look at another diode. This is, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of diode this is. I pulled this out of an old piece of equipment. Uh, it's a glass diode. Uh, this one has a similar but different curve. Uh, zoom out a little bit here. Uh, we can see that where the silicon diodes seem to have a pretty steady current draw once it turned on. This one uh, current draw is not not quite as as, as sharp. Uh, if we look here. See, this turns on somewhere right around, so, right around 250 millivolts. It still has that same characteristic curve to it. And if we look down on the, on the tech here, where you have, you know, it stays off until forward voltage is reached, and then it turns on. So this is a Zener diode. This is a very recognizable curve for a zener because while it has all the characteristics of a regular diode, there is this reverse breakdown voltage. And if we look here at two volts per division, we've got two, four, uh, roughly, looks like roughly five volts where that breaks down. And again, we can, we can toss some cursors on here and go in and measure that, and sure enough, yep, it's like 5.1 5 volts, somewhere thereabouts. So, you know, once you're familiar with 
the you know what these curves look like it becomes it becomes easy to sort of to just toss a device on in here and look for the curve so if you see that sort of that sort of s-shaped curve you know that you don't just have a regular diode you've got a zener if we move to an led this is a red led again same type of story LED turns on somewhere around 1.6 volts. And I've got a super bright blue LED. And if we look, we can see this one turns on uh, somewhere here around 2.6 volts but you know in all cases they all have that similar that similar look to them so if you had a component you didn't know what it was you toss it in there and you get that you get that that curve uh, you know it's a diode of some sort when you're not testing anything um, because there's no current draw the octopus shows you you know no, no, no current draw for the entire voltage range that it's testing over. And if you short the leads, you get a vertical line, and that shows that there is a full current draw for all, all voltages. So any device that you put on there, if you get a flat line, it's open. Get a vertical line, it's shorted. Very useful in that respect. So let's look at a resistor. Resistor returns pretty much what we would expect, which is, you know, as voltage increases, current increases. Resistors are always going to give you a sloped line of some sort. Um, you know, again, vertical line, it would be shorted. Horizontal line, it would be open. Now let's take a look at a capacitor. This is a 10 microfarad electrolyte. Capacitors always give you an oval shape. Uh, this is because of the, the phase shift that they introduce into the circuit. This shape, again, all capacitors will return something similar. So it's definitely a you know, good way to know if your capacitor is, is working or not. So let's get something, let's get another capacitor here just to show something different. So this is a, what is this? I can't even read it. This is a one microfarad capacitor. This up. And again, get that oval shape that is typical of capacitors. Good way to check if a capacitor is, is, is shorted out or not. Or if it's uh, or if it's or if it's blown, uh, just look for that curve. All right, the last component we're going to take a look at is a transistor. Um, I have an NPN transistor here that we've hooked up to the octopus, and we're testing it at eight volts peak. And as we can see, it looks very much like a diode. That's because the emitter base junction of a transistor functions very much like a diode does. If we look, we can see in the negative voltage range, the diode doesn't, doesn't conduct. We get just above zero volts, it turns on. Um, if we zoom in a bit here, we can see 200 millivolts, we've got two, four, six, Maybe seven, maybe around seven millivolts is the forward voltage for that. Uh, if I toss the cursor on here, go to measure it, we can see where, yep, just around seven, right about there, six, nine, seven, something like that. Put this back down. So we're testing at eight volts peak. Um, nice thing about this octopus is it has multiple voltage ranges. If I kick it up to 16 volts peak, and take a look. The diode now looks, looks very different. I mean the transistor, it no longer has a diode characteristic. It now has a zener characteristic because we can tell by looking at that curve. And we're at two volts per division, and we can see 
two, four, six, eight, somewhere just above eight volts is the reverse breakdown voltage. So if we want to zoom into that, we can take, we can, that's a little too zoomed, there we go. So let's move this over. Let's toss a cursor back on it and we can measure and see what do we have here. And we're at Yep, just about it's about eight, eight and a half, you know, negative eight and a half volts. Now, if you want to do that same type of measurement on your analog scope, I do have cursors on my 2445. The problem is I don't have I don't have x-axis voltage cursors, so what I can do is I can cheat. I can swap my x and y around, basically turn the curve on its side. And let's just... Get this positioned where I want it, down there, and I can put my starting ending cursors, and I can get that same type of measurement right like this. So roughly 8.4 volts. So definitely a little bit easier on the digital scope, but certainly doable. On my analog scope as well. Let's just put that back to what we had before. So all in all, pretty useful little, little piece of equipment. That's been a look at the Octopus, a relatively low-tech piece of test gear that can be invaluable in identifying and testing components. Uh, whether you build one or buy one, I strongly recommend you add this to your test bench. Um, I think you'll find it invaluable. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up um, and leave any comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.